Salutations travellers, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet, and today... Oh, I've got itchy shoulder. Oh. Oh, should I reach on my intro? Nah, fuck it. Welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. If you're looking for the video that I promised where I paint this wonderful miniature from WizKid, that's not very good against the blue of the background, is it? Uh, Omnath from WizKids Games, uh, which is a D&D slash Magic the Gathering model. Well, that's going to be a video that comes out tomorrow, because it's strictly speaking not Warhammer. And I have another topic that I'm itching to talk about. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm in the middle of editing this video, and I've noticed that I have dry skin on the end of my nose. Uh, had pretty bad hay fever recently. I can't stop blowing my nose. It's like a fountain of cum, but instead of cum, it's snot. And instead of my penis, it's my nose. Um, yeah, I've noticed it. I'm assuming people have already probably noticed it for the comment section. Um, feel free to point it out. It helps with engagement. Um, it's not a bugger. I, if, I, if I had any shame, I guess I'd be mildly embarrassed. Anyway, now I've noticed it, you've noticed it too. On with the video. That topic is Games Workshop's relationship with 3D printing. Now, as you can see, I have recently become interested in 3D printing for a reason that is... Well, it's glaringly obvious. I bought a 3D printer on Prime Day. And yes, I bought it from Amazon Prime. And yes, Amazon are fucking evil. But look, it was like 60 or 80 bucks cheaper than it should have been. Per pounds, actually. Um, there's no ethical consumption to capitalism. And in all fairness, they already pay part of my essential salary through Twitch. So it'd be kind of weird to try and disconnect from them that heavily anyway. So if you want to, if the tankies on Twitter want to have a go, because I'm not being progressive enough by not buying from Prime Day... Fine. Go ahead. Tweet at me and I'll just block you and ignore you. Let's just get that out of the way. I put this beautiful scarab here. Look at this. Oh, look at the detail on this fucking thing. This is an Arch Villain Miniatures 3D print. I'll put a link to the Patreon in the description below. I'm going to use this as my Counts as Thousand Suns Demon Prints. I'll talk more about this once I get around to painting it this week or next. So the reason I want to do a video today talking about 3D printing is not to talk about the ins and outs of it or what I've been up to. It's currently going right now, printing a gorgeous model from uh, Beastery Games, but I'll show that in another video another time. I want to talk about it because there is an uh, ongoing prevailing um, misconception about GW's relationship with 3D printing that has cropped up since they released the announcement about their rules for their upcoming tournament circuit. If you didn't know, uh, the British-grown, British-based Warhammer creating company Games Workshop has announced the return to 40k events by announcing three events across America. If you want to go to a tournament in the UK held by GW, well, fuck you. Alongside the announcement of what mission pack they're using and where they are and tickets go on sale, Warhammer Community released this document here. This is the Warhammer 40,000 Grand Tournament Series Warhammer Events booklet slash PDF. The annoying thing is, is that the cover uses the same art as other GT books. Uh, also has GT in the name. Honestly, if you wanted to make it more confusing, you'd struggle. GW, fucking pack it in. So without having a read of it myself, I had seen a few videos floating about and listened to multiple podcasts whilst doing my painting of Omnath and other bits and bobs, and read on Discords and Reddit and Twitter that GW, Games Workshop, had banned the use of all 3D printed things at their events. I myself had absorbed this preconception so hard that I got into a bit of a heated conversation with Ape of Justice on my Discord yesterday where I was arguing black is blue, when in fact blue is blue. I want to draw attention to a few videos that are floating around. For example, the uh, video Illegal, the current set of 3D printing in Warhammer by 3D printed tabletop is a very good video for the most part. And also, big shout out to Aeons of Battle for their... It's actually a video talking primarily about a load of things, like what books they've picked up, what models they've painted recently, and they touch on this topic too. Um, they've gone for the clickbait title that I'll probably go for too, which is Games Workshop declares 3D prints are illegal, when in reality, they actually explain that people have got the thing wrong like I'm about to explain. The document explains that if you have converted models, uh, converted and forged world models slash units, many players scratch, build, or heavily convert elements of the model collection, and these activities are a hallowed part of Warhammer hobby history. For the sake of fairness, any conversion should be compatible inside, size, yada yada yada. Please submit them ahead of the event to make sure you have permission to use them. That's it. This document does not mention 3D printing explicitly at all. It doesn't mention third-party bits at all. Because obviously, 
it's a, it's a safe assumption to think that uh, GW aren't going to be happy if you rock up with an army 3D printed out of proxies or counts as models, things that aren't actually GW stuff. But the fear was they were banning like uh, resin heads and resin shoulder pads and things like that that you've either bought online or 3 printed it yourself at home off the STLs. That was the fear. There was not a single fucking mention of that in the GT mission bookie thingamabob. What the fuck do we even call this? Grand Tournament Series. WJQ60GIKN0LWI. Whatever. F fuck this shit. What people are getting confused by, and all specs tactics, I love you, buddy, but you've done a video on this too, which does not make this very clear at all. Model requirements for events at Warhammer World. This PDF, also available on not Warhammer Community, but Warhammer World. Warhammer Community, uh, a thing about Warhammer World, a very specific big shop with a uh, Warhammer museum attached to it in the north of England that holds events in their event hall, has a PDF explaining how they see things. In their document it says, Are 3D printed parts I've designed allowed? Much like hand sculpted detail, if you've gone to the effort of designing and printing your own bespoke parts for your army, then these parts are indeed permitted at our events. They specifically say that all miniatures in your collection must be Citadel or Forge World miniatures. At the home of Warhammer, third party miniatures are not permitted. Any models that use must be Citadel Forge World. That being said, if you're getting creative with conversions, then generic parts such as plastic card, wire, and brass rod are fine to use, but any cast miniature parts specifically designed for models must be produced by Citadel or Forge World. So if you're going to for the, the Warhammer World, not Forge World, the Warhammer World store, the big store with a museum attached to it, I will do a vlog there at some point. In the north of England, to play in their event hall at one of their events, they have a very specific thing that you can't do this. Now, there is a potential that that document gets updated and put into the other GT series guidelines thing. There is a good potential for that. I'm going to come to that more in a moment as to why I think that's not that big a deal. But at the moment, they haven't. At the moment, you just send your alternate-headed Space Marine, Space Wolf, Wolfen Guard, or whatever the fuck they are, to their email address on the document, and they will tell you whether they're okay or not. What, why are people misconstruing the two documents? So the two could be tied together, they could be entwined. There's a suggestion that that could happen, but it hasn't yet. But that is not the prevailing narrative I'm getting on social media, on podcasts, and in videos. People are getting the wrong end of the stick. And I can see why. I got the wrong end of the stick. It's okay to get the wrong end of the stick, but now we need to correct which stick end is the right one and not the wrong one. And this happens a lot in Warhammer. Warhammer has a very confusing rule system, and I guess even once you start to go to tournaments and stuff, I've booked in for my first two, I'll tell you more about that in the video. But once you start to go to tournaments and stuff, it just adds layers of confusion, right? The most recent one that I enjoyed of this was that Goonhammer, not shitting on them, I like most of the stuff they put out. Goonhammer, good shit. However, in their uh, review of the New Sisters of Battle Codex, they told the world, the collective world of Warhammer, that you couldn't pop two cherubs on a Retributor squad in the same shooting phase. I, uh, I hadn't read that, but I had like four different people on two different discords and one on Reddit tell me you can't do that. Or at least said tell me the one on Reddit I just read. But people were saying you couldn't do this now because Goonhammer had said so. So I started to play like that on my Discord with people that I play with on TTS. And eventually, someone in the Sisters of Battle Discord pointed out to me, actually, that's not true. And then you look at the codex, and you're like, huh, nothing here suggests that. And then you check Goonhammer again, and you're like, oh, actually, they'd, they, that was just like baseless conjecture with no actual rationale? Weird. Since then, supposedly Goonham have retracted this, but I've checked the document and it still says, um, getting a new wording on the cherubs that looks like it's intended to allow only you to use one a turn. When the actual text is, this is grabbing it from Wahapedia here, but it's in the book as well. Once battle in your shooting phase, after this unit has shot, one model in your unit can immediately shoot with one of its ranged weapons again. If the unit has two Armorian cherubs, it can use its ability twice per battle. Nowhere does it say you can't use them in the same turn. Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. We're just making it up. So let's just say it has been retracted. But it already got out there. The damage was done. People were propagating this falsehood over and over. And again, I had heard someone say it and I believed it. I, I have, unfortunately, have faith and assume that people are in the right when they're not. All I'm getting at is that this is a confusing hobby at the best of times. And perhaps we should fact check ourselves. If we have a strong belief that a rule works a certain way, perhaps post the exact part of the FAQ, the core rule book, it's sampled on Wahapedia, a picture from your phone or whatever into your Facebook chat or your group chat to try and clear things up. 
I see it time and time again. I've seen it on the sisters' Facebook groups. I've seen it on the fucking Blood Angels Facebook groups. People just don't understand how fly works in the charge phase. And it's fine not to understand these things. Warhammer is fucking confusing. But don't just keep spouting the same shit. Look it up. Have a, have a little look-see. Especially if it's a contentious point. Just have a little look-see on the Wahapedias in the fucking book. Just have a little look-see and come to your own conclusion. Fact check some of this shit. So to clarify, 3D printed models are not banned at the new GT series things. It's a possibility, but it hasn't been explicitly stated yet. I guess to be on the safe side, if I'm honest, you should avoid taking 3D printed stuff to a Games Workshop official tournament. Most tournaments are probably gonna be fine for the sounds of things, but I would err on the side of caution, but it's not the direct explicit intention of GW yet. However, on that topic, let's be real, it makes sense they don't want you to play your 3D printed models at their tournaments. I think it is overkill to not allow 3D printed shoulder pads or third party bought guns, especially when some of your kits don't have enough fucking multi melters in them GW. But again, they are selling the product. The, the, the tournament structure, the game system is all there to sell their toys to you. They want you to buy their battle barbies, not someone else's. So I'm not angry or upset or even moderately surprised at the idea that they might do this, but they actually haven't done it yet. We're just misconstruing two different documents. Big shout out to Aeons of Battle for clearing that up in their video. I had to go back and watch it because I only watched it off the cuff in the corner of my eye and missed the full uh, details. They cleared this up as well. People should sub to Aeons of Battle. Good shit. And that's it. That's my little clear up for today's Warhammer Wednesday. There will be a model painting vlog going up on the channel tomorrow with any luck. Just going to go shoot some vanity shots now and record the audio. If you like this video, smash the like button and ring my bell. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think of GW supposedly not allowing 3D printed models. Uh, let me know if you think that I'm being mean by pointing out that the document for the tournament doesn't actually explicitly state any of this shit at all. You could probably argue that case on the floor. Uh, and let me know if you think that that will be updated in time. It bets you very bad for them to release it not saying that and then update it to say that, I don't know, in a month's time when someone's bought their tickets and people have to remodel their fucking armies. That would get my heckles right up and I might be crying about that on the internet in a month's time if that is the case. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.